Hi, this is Ben Sullins, and welcome to Data Analysis Fundamentals with Tableau. In this course, I'm going to walk you through an introduction to Tableau, the new BI platform that is helping people see and understand their data like never before. I'll show you how to get dirty with your data. That includes working with metadata on top of your data sources, matching different data sources together. I'll learn how to show me the data using Tableau's data visualization techniques. We'll add some intelligence to the whole mix here with parameters and calculations. I'll show you how to paint a holistic view of this using dashboarding techniques, which includes bringing views from multiple places, different data sources together, as well as making them interactive for our users. And lastly, I'll talk about how to share your work. Obviously, that's the most important part is delivering it to your audience so that they can ingest the information and act on it. So let's get started here with an introduction to Tableau. We'll talk about visual analysis. We'll get into visual perception, how we actually perceive information with our eyes. We'll talk about Tableau's product family. I'll show you how to connect to your data. We'll get into the data terminology. And then we'll break down the view terminology so you ha have an understanding of all the jargon folks that use Tableau on a regular basis use to communicate and talk about what their analysis is trying to show. All right, so let's get started with visual analysis. Now, this process of visual analysis often starts with acquiring some data. We're looking for some data that will help us answer our questions or analyze a process, often things like monitoring dashboards or showing things that aren't meeting targets, those kind of things. Once we have some data, it's a good idea to try to filter it down to something that's relevant to our analysis. If we wanted to find out how a marketing campaign that launched last Tuesday was doing, it'd be good to filter it down to just data relevant to that question. If we were looking at something about trending analysis year over year, the data set would be quite different. So filter down to a sizable amount that will help us answer our questions in a focused way, rather than bringing in all of our data, which can often lead to overfitting or including too much noise in the actual analysis. Once we've done that, we can enhance it. This is when we're talking about the intelligence factor, adding in me metrics, calculations, cost per click, uh, cost per new customer, all those kind of things. We can then tune our analysis using different aggregations and ways of making our dashboards even faster than Tableau already makes them. And lastly, we deliver them. This is the sharing aspect. Once we've delivered a dashboard or a visualization of some sort, often what happens is it leads to more questions. So this really is the crux of visual analysis, how it's a life cycle that continues to iterate. And Tableau's focus is really to help us iterate through this as fast as possible. That way we can really get to the insights and the value that we're trying to get by this entire process here. A lot of tools and other platforms out there focus on design and requirements and heavy upfront investments, often leading to you delivering something, which then just spurs more requirements and more investment. And if you think about it, the whole point is to get to the actual decision making. And the faster you can iterate through this, the faster you can get to more information that leads to better decision making. So that's really Tableau's paradigm here and how it's different than a lot of traditional BI tools. Let's dig in deeper here to understand exactly what we mean by visual analysis. So there was a white paper by the founders of Tableau back in 2007 in which they state, visual analysis means exploring your data visually. As a story unfolds, you navigate from one visual summary into another. Let's look at this in example form using Tableau. Here is a basic view in Tableau, which we have sales by product subcategory sorted in descending order. This is a single measure. If we look at this, it doesn't tell us a whole lot. You've probably seen a lot of things like this before. If you've worked with sales analysis before, you know that the sheer number of sales isn't always the whole picture. You often need to understand things like profit. So as we explore our data visually, a story unfolds. Ah, now when we add in profit to color our bars by, we can see that tables, which maybe before we thought was doing great because it had such a huge number of sales, is actually showing a negative profit. That's really bad, especially the fact that it's one of our highest selling product subcategories. Now we can take this data and we can pivot it and see a totally different view of the same numbers here. We've drilled into tables and we're looking at a profit ratio. So we're actually trying to dig deeper and deeper into our insights here. 
and see, man, tables has really been bad for many years and many quarters. And instead of looking at it a bar form, often when we look at something over time, we want to look at it as a line to see the actual up and down, the ebb and flow of it. So we can change what we're looking at and we can change the way we're looking at it. So now you can see year over year comparison of profit ratio for tables as a product subcategory. And you can see that generally in Q4 things jump up and we've only had one profitable year uh, overall. So this is something that we started with very simple visualization, something that maybe looked fine. The story unfolded and within a couple clicks, we were able to change exactly how we, and the way we were looking at this, really helping us dig deeper to find more insights. So that's the process of visual analysis. Now let's think about visual perception, how we as humans actually perceive shapes, size, and color on the page. This is critical to understanding good design and how Tableau helps us with this. There's a famous quote by a man who knew a little bit about design that says, simplicity is the essence of clear communication. Of course, this was Steve Jobs in his 2005 speech at Stanford. What he was trying to say was, it behooves us to overcomplicate or make things very cluttered. The more simple we can make things, the clearer our communications will be. And this is incredibly powerful and true when we're talking about the concept of visual perception and how we perceive things. So let's start with an example here. I'll give you about 15, 20 seconds. Feel free to pause your screen if you want, take as much time as you want here, and count the number of times five appears in the string below. Okay, you got it? Now let's enhance this view and see how long it takes you to count them now. So what have we done here? On the top we have the original view which doesn't have any emphasis on trying to answer the question that I posed to you. And on the bottom I've added a layer of emphasis simply by bolding the number of fives. And you can see that on top, we have something that happens in your brain called attentive processing, where you're scanning the, every single number, probably from left to right, top to bottom. And then on the bottom, without even thinking about it, you can't avoid it. The numbers jump right out at you. So the answer to the question is unavoidable. It's instead of attentive processing, where you have to focus in and try to remember shape and color, it just jumps right out. So before you even have a thought, the number is, the answer is staring you right in the face. Let's take a, a, another look at this here. Now pie charts are notoriously bad for trying to compare anything because of the way our brains perceive angles. And especially when we're trying to compare multiple pies over time, uh, makes this even more difficult. So here's an example, I'm trying to answer the question, which product categories are trending up? You can see each slice here is represented by a different category and we're looking at it over time. Now let's take a look at this in a different form. And you can see it's pretty obvious. On top again we have attentive where we have to try to focus in. In this case we're looking at each different slice. We're trying to see does it get bigger or smaller as time goes on and then compare that to the other ones. And then this time what we're doing is we change the display to be a simple line and with that line, it's just incredibly obvious which ones are trending up and down. So these are the main tenets of what we're talking about with visual perception. We're playing with things like size, shape, color, position on screen, and granularity as well, all to answer a question or make the answer be as much of a pre-attentive process as possible. Understanding this and thinking about this Knowing your audience are key elements of good information design. Now let's talk about Tableau's product family. Tableau's product family starts with Tableau Desktop. This is where we author and create all of our visualizations. This is where we pull data in. This is the development environment for Tableau. 
Now, they are working on a web authoring version, which was released in version 8 with Tableau Server. Uh, but it's not a pure authoring environment yet. You can't start from scratch. So I won't include that as an authoring tool. Um, so just think, if you're building something in Tableau, you're going to have Tableau Desktop installed. If you want to share this with your audience, the first thing to think about is how to do that. So Tableau Reader is like Adobe Reader in that you can send somebody a packaged workbook, which includes the data. So if you're emailing this around, it'll be a large file that basically zips up and includes all of your data. And then they can open it on this desktop client. Uh, both of these are Windows only currently, uh, but there are plans to release a Mac version in the near future. For Tableau Public is a free hosted version of Tableau Server, which is really cool if you want to do something where you can post something on your blog or on your company's website and you don't have to worry about hosting it yourself. Uh, you can use this solution uh, to share that with the world. Now there isn't security here, so anybody can see any of the data or the visualizations, uh, not necessarily meaning it's obvious, but they could find it. There's no, no way to hide that from them. And there are some size limitations to the data here. You have to extract the data, and I'll talk about what an extract means later. Um, and you can only have, uh, right now, 100,000 rows. I believe they are working on that a little bit, but there are some limitations to this. But the good news is it's free, and anybody can use it to share data with the world. Now here's Tableau Server. This is the enterprise solution. Uh, if you talk about enterprise BI platforms, that's what Tableau Server is in this product family here. It's something that you host yourself. Uh, you can put it on the Amazon Cloud or any other cloud hosting environment you like. Um, I've done it uh, on-premise and on cloud. It works well in both cases. It's pretty much a basic web application. Um, and then there are a couple really more advanced features like the data extract engine, which allow you to create this uh, one version of the truth. You can basically do things like create a metadata layer either directly on top of a data source or creating the actual physical database using a Tableau's extract engine. Publish that up and share it with other folks that have access to the server. You can secure it. It's scalable. You can do lots of options here. Uh, and look forward to a future course on how to do all that in Tableau Server. Just know for this that you know, it is the enterprise version of Tableau's uh, BI platform. And you also have a new one that was just launched called Tableau Online. Now, if you're just starting out and you're, say, a medium-sized company and you're not too worried about putting your data in the cloud, you've gotten over that security threshold with your IT department, uh, Tableau Online is a great way to get up and running with Tableau Server very quickly. I believe it's about $500 per user, um, and they take care of everything for you, though. You go online, you sign up, you create your site, and you can start sharing data with your partners, internally with your other users. Um, all that stuff is handled by them. It is the SaaS version of their Tableau Server product. And it's a really great way to get started, as well as there is a transition that allows you to go from Tableau Online to Tableau Server. Once you hit a certain number of users, you can use, I believe, part of the credit that you paid for Tableau Online to buy Tableau Server, something like that. They want to make it as easy as possible for you to start using their products. Okay, so now let's talk about connecting to your data. When you open up the Connect to Data dialog, you get this window here. On the right, you have your saved data sources. You should have these two here. These are the sample data sets that come with Tableau. Uh, in Tableau version 8, they added a few more, so you may see a few more there, but these are all ones that are shipped with it, and we'll use those throughout this course to talk about accessing and visualizing your data. On the left, you have your file-based data sources. These are things like data extracts, ex access files, Excel files, CSV, or tab-delimited files. And then on the bottom, you have lots of server-based data sources. Some fun ones here are Google Analytics, uh, SQL Server, Power Pivot, MySQL. You also have a lot of big data sources. You have Cloudera's Hadoop distribution, Google BigQuery. There's also Amazon Redshift that's been released, and uh, MapR, Hadoop Hive, uh, Netiza, Vertica, lots of different sources here. Tableau's view is that they want to be able to connect and play with almost any data source you have. They're not looking to replace a data warehouse or a database management system. They're looking to take that data, pull it into a great environment for visual analytics and visual exploration, and then use that as your presentation tool to give insights and information to your audience. So when you connect to data, you first need to set up the connection. When you first do this, you 
click connect to data. In this case, I chose an Excel workbook. I'm prompted with this dialog here. I have in the middle here, three different options. I have single table, multiple table, and custom SQL. Now, the top part in which we establish our connection string, in this case, Excel is just a string, exactly a path to the file. It's very similar with the, almost any other database. If this were SQL Server or Oracle or MySQL, I would enter the server name, the username and password. And then I still have the same options here in the middle. I have this single table, multi-table or custom SQL connections. Now, when I set this up, one thing to think about is always giving it a good name so you can remember what it is. It gives you a name by default that's based on what you chose up above. I like to usually rename that to something that's based on the type of analysis or type of data that's contained with it. In this case, I might, might choose orders from Superstore. It's very verbose, Tableau is, so feel free to use special characters, spaces, all that. Think of it less as a development environment where you have to adhere to rigid naming conventions. Here, it's very much focused on the analyst. So these are the names that you want people to be able to easily read and understand. Think about if you were re releasing this to a business person, you'd want something that made sense to them and not necessarily something that a database administrator would, would choose. So for the multi-table option, we first choose a single table as kind of our primary table, and then we ch click on the multi-table radio button in the middle, and then we add other tables here. When we add another table, we have to choose a join criteria, and we can either do left, inner, or right joins. Once we've established that, I highly recommend clicking preview results. This is going to tell you if your join works or not, and you can scan. I think the default is 10,000 rows. And lastly, don't forget to give it a name. Lastly, we have our custom SQL option. This is where you can enter any SQL that would be compatible with your data source. In this case, what we're, we're looking at is Excel, and so it's the actual JET database driver, uh, which looks very similar to most ANSI standard SQL. Once you chose that option, you can click on the ellipse. This will give you a new dialog here where you can punch this in. Uh, you can do, you know, most of the features of your database system can do really cool aggregations or window functions or anything like that that maybe inside of Tableau isn't entirely native. Um, so this is a way to kind of extend that. A good example here is doing union queries where maybe you pull all the data from a couple different data tables. One example might be pulling data from a partitioned fact table that only has data from you know, 2010, 2011, 2013, et cetera. Um, pulling that all into a single data set so you can analyze it holistically in Tableau. And lastly, don't forget to give it the name. Once we've set up our connection here, we are presented with these three options and these are almost universal. The top one is when we want to connect live and run real-time queries against our database. This can be slow depending on the data source, or if you have a really fast database like an MPP system, such as a SQL Server, Parallel Data Warehouse, or Vertica, Netiza, Par Excel, uh, any one of those newer SQL databases that offers the parallel queries. Uh, this could be you know, the way to go because it lightens the load on Tableau and it can still perform really fast. The middle one is importing all the data. I actually rarely do this. Basically what would happen here is it would run the query, take all the results, convert them into Tableau's columnar database called the Tableau Data Extract, and save that locally on your machine. Now the reason I rarely do this is because you can achieve the same results using this import sum data, but importing sum data also allows you to do incremental extracts. So one thing that's interesting there is you can set up a date field or an integer field and say, okay, only pull in data that has a new, a higher integer or a newer date. And this is gonna make your extracts also perform better because you're not gonna have to refresh the entire thing every time. And it's just gonna keep adding data incrementally getting better and better. When we click import some data, this is what we're presented with here. We have the option on top to do a filter in this case, I chose one that was a date and I want to include values over a thousand. I could also do things like a relative date filter, only pull in the last two years. That's a good idea if you have, let's say, a fact table that has, I don't know, 800, 900 million rows or more, and you really only care about the last year for this dashboard or for this type of analysis. Uh, you wouldn't want to unnecessarily pull all that data in for no reason. It's just going to slow things down. So you can choose to filter the data right up front before it even gets into Tableau. Then in the middle section there, you saw where we can actually aggregate the data. 
So imagine if your data was down to the second or millisecond level, but all we were ever gonna do is maybe down to the day or even the week level. Well, if your data has data of that nature, you can actually choose to say, okay, we'll just aggregate everything up to this level, to you know monthly, weekly, whatever. This compresses the data set and makes it much faster to work with. And lastly, you can set up the incremental extracts here and you get to choose the fields that it identifies as, as dates or integers. If you wanted to do a sampling of data, there are a couple options down at the bottom. You can say, give me the top X number of rows or just sample a number of rows. This is good, again, if you're working with a large data set and you really just wanna play with something um, that's representative of the overall data set, but you want it to be really fast and you're just looking for more exploration. You're not looking for actually presenting the information to somebody to make decisions with yet. Of course, you'd wanna go back and change that but it is a, a good way when you're just doing the visual exploration part of this to pull in a small set of data and get going. Once you've connected to data, we have the data pane. Now this is the part of the data window which contains all of our fields, all of our connections, and everything we have to then build our views with. On top, you have the connection. Now there really isn't a limit to how many you can have. I would say it's common to have five or more in a production style dashboard. That is unless you have a really well baked out data warehouse which has all the data already pulled in from all the different data sources. One really cool feature about Tableau is that you can easily combine data from multiple data sources. That includes data you find on the web. An example I use this for often is I may have sales data or I may have users uh, by country and I may wanna compare that to the population of that country. Well, the population of the country isn't necessarily a data set that our company has invested in pulling into our data warehouse. It's not something that you would think of always having available because it's so important. So what I've done in this case is I would actually go out to Wikipedia, go to the population by country page, highlight and copy the HTML table, come into Tableau and hit paste. It would add it as a separate data source, and now I can join that up and do analysis. I can see how many users I have by country compared to the country's population. Really cool and really great ways to mash up multiple data sources here to give you a really well-rounded or holistic view of your analysis. Below our data connections, we have the first list of attributes, and these are our dimensions. Now, I like to introduce this as the dimensions are the context of our analysis where the measures are the subject of it. Recently, a colleague of mine brought up that dimensions also have a unique effect on our visualizations and that they describe the level of detail. So if we were thinking about looking at sales, well, if we were just to drag sales from our measures down below onto a view, we would get a single number because the data would be completely aggregated. Now, if we wanted to add sales by customer, sales by product, sales by region, et cetera, that's when we drag in dimensions. And so what we're actually adding is a level of detail. So measures down below are always gonna be aggregated and they're gonna be aggregated to the level of detail as defined by our dimensions. So I look at it as our context as well as our level of detail in our analysis. Inside of dimensions, we have hierarchies. If you're familiar with these, maybe from OLAP cubes or other data types, we can define them inside of Tableau very easily by just dragging fields on top of each other. And I'll show this to you in a later module when we actually start working with, with data in Tableau. And here you can see that Tableau has given us some, this is our superstore sales, in which case when we do analysis, remember it's defining our level of detail. So if we had sales and we were to drag our customer city hierarchy on, we would start with state and then we could click on a little plus sign and drill down to city. So this is how you get your drill down reports where you start at a high level, which is always a good place to start if you're trying to look at something that's very wide. And then you can drill down into the details where you see necessary. In the data window, you'll also notice attributes that have an equal sign to them. And that indicates a calculation. Now calculations in Tableau are really powerful in that you can define them to be aggregate appropriate. And what I mean by that is, if we wanted to see something like profit ratio, you could have that defined by the overall profit ratio, or you could do something where it's based on the dimensions you have in there. So you could see profit ratio by state, profit ratio by customer, profit ratio by region or category. And Tableau would be able to understand the different levels of aggregation and calculate that on the fly. 
So some calculations are great inside of your data warehouse, but then you may lose certain additive properties of those calculations. And those is, those are the ones that I contend should be better handled inside of Tableau um, and that you can drag them around and they will always be correct because of how you've defined them in Tableau. And we'll get into calculations a little bit later on. With measure, these are our aggregates. As I mentioned before, I believe these to be the subject of our analysis. Often, if we're looking at something like sales, we'll see lots of things all related to sales down here. And these are all the numbers that we generally aggregate. Now, we can do something like a distinct count of customers, and that creates a measure. But always know that measures are going to be aggregated to the level of detail as defined by our dimensions. As well as calculations exist inside of dimensions, they also exist inside of measures. Now let's talk about dimensions in a little bit more detail. So here we have a focused view of just our dimensions from Superstore Sales. On the left side, you'll notice that I basically listed all the different data types. And data types in Tableau are a bit looser than they are in a lot of other database systems. For example, you don't define the length of a string, you just define something as a string. Uh, below that, you can see we have geographic roles. These are actually a bit more detailed in that you assign, in this case, city would be listed as a geographic role of city versus the one above it, which would be state. Tableau, in this case, has guessed that based on the name of the field. If Tableau doesn't guess it correctly, let's say you had customer underscore ST for state, um, you can go in and manually assign it, and I'll show you how to do that later. We have numbers here. Numbers are often treated as measures by default. You can change that simply by clicking and dragging from the measures up to the dimensions. A good example here is order ID. You wouldn't necessarily want to do a sum of order ID. You may want to get a max of it if you had an incremental number to see how many orders we had. But this is uh, where you see the data types is defined on the left side of the attribute. Below that, we have our date time. This is the little calendar with a clock around it. You also have date, which is the same thing, just without the clock, which basically is removing the time element from it. That's useful because sometimes you may want to look at things that are aggregated up to a day level. And if you have the time included in there in the data type, it will sometimes add it to the formatting and just kind of be useless because it'll say like 12, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's one other way to look at how to adjust this R playing with data types. On the right side, we have more of the working with our data elements. As I mentioned before, creating hierarchies, which are our drill downs, creating calculations, which you, I see identified by the equal sign. Down below that, we also have bins. Now, a bin is something that we often use in a histogram, which basically gives you uh, a, a range of values for a measure. So in this case, you can see the profit bin. So later on, when we look at actually visualizing this, what you'll see is you could drag this on and it would give you ranges of profit, let's say zero to 1,000, 1,001 to 2,000, et cetera. And then you could do a count of those per bin to give you a histogram. So it's a dimension in that it's a grouping of measure values or a range of measure values. And then down below, we actually have groups. Groups are interesting in that we can do things, a lot of what if analysis here. If I was doing something where I looked at sales by region and I had four or five regions, what if I wanted to combine two of those? Well, I can simply click on them, right click and say group, and I get a little paper clip icon here. It, don't worry, it's not clippy like from Office 97, but it's just the group icon. Um, and then we can do it actually combine multiple different dimension members to create our own groupings of those members and even add those to a hierarchy. So imagine you could have regions, you could have region groups, and you can do all of this in Tableau with only a single click. So it's not something that you always have to go back to your data warehousing team to spend weeks or months building. It's something that you can easily manipulate and use in working with your data. Now let's take a deeper look into our measures. So with measures here, I notice the data types, and they're all numbers with the exception of latitude and longitude. I'll cover those in a second. We have calculations, and then we have these generated fields. So these generated fields, uh, in this example, are latitude and longitude, which exist when we have a geocoded field. It's something that Tableau generates for us, and those are the numeric values. They have the globe icon because they're used to map things, even though they're a number. And we have number of records, which is a thing we get with every data connection we, we build. 
And the data connection here with number of records defines it as a just a single integer of one. This is really useful because often you'll have something like a list of you know, orders that came in. And if you wanted to see a count of orders, well, here number of records just gives you the number one across every row. So I could just drag that on. This is often also the, the first thing I look at when I connect to a data set. I just double click number of records. It gives me a nice little bar chart showing me how many rows I'm playing with in my data set. And lastly, we have measure values. This works with measure names to give us a way to display multiple measures in a single space. And when we get into visualizing this, that'll make more sense. But here it is for your reference. In data terminology, the last two things I want to cover are sets and parameters. Now, set is a collection of dimension members. So imagine if you were looking at a list of your customers and you saw that there was a group of them that had a negative profit ratio. A set would be a good way to identify them and put them into a filter. And so what you do is you would just select some data and or select a dimension and choose which ones you want involved in the set. And then you can actually use that in your analysis. So I can do something like drag this onto my, my view and say, okay, only show me customers that have, you know, are in this set, whatever that set is defined as. We also have parameters. These are independent variables that allow users to control input. So these are not tied to the data set itself meaning that we can have a parameter which has no bearing on what the data source it's affecting is. And in fact, parameters can be used across multiple data sources. Down the road here, I'll get into how to actually use parameters, but just know that right now it's basically a variable that you allow users to control and play with the different ways of data are being displayed. Okay, so now let's take a look at view terminology. So here I have a bit wider view which shows actually a visualization that we've built. You may recall it from our section on visual perception. And we've already developed something, we've connected to data, and we're looking at Tableau Desktop. So the first thing to think about here is how different Tableau is. And what it does is, instead of giving you just default chart types or wizards or design interfaces to build a predefined version of a view, what it gives you are all the different elements to play with. So you can change things like color, size, shape, labeling, rows and columns. And how we do this is first by understanding that something drawn on the page is called a mark. Marks, as I mentioned before, are defined by the level of detail through our dimensions. If you see here, I have subcategory on rows. That means that subcategory actually gives me a new row for every discrete different subcategory in my data set. And that's how many marks we get. These marks are then drawn inside of a window or pane. And this window or pane is defined by my measure, sales, as you can see up in green up above. That is what gives me an axis. So blue pills, which are discrete, in this case I'm looking at a discrete dimension, gives me rows, and it gives me a level of detail that I'm looking at and the green pill, in this case, sales, which is aggregated up using sum, gives me an axis of which to draw marks. So blue pills give me discrete buckets, whether it be a measure or a dimension, and define the level of detail I have, whereas green pills, which are usually measures, give me an axis of which to draw marks. Marks can be bars, lines, shapes, could be a map, could be anything else. We can even define custom things to draw. Those are the fundamental things you need to know about views. Now I'm going to add it a bit more detail here. You have the axis of sales, as I mentioned. And when we want to manipulate a mark, we have a thing on the left called a marks card. Now one term I haven't thrown at you yet is called a shelf. Now most things that you drag a element from our data window onto is called a shelf. Inside of the marks card, you can see here we have a color shelf, a size shelf, a label shelf, a detail shelf, and a tooltip shelf. Up above, we have row and column shelves as well. Those are the common ones, similar to how a pivot table would be defined. We have a filter shelf. And on the left, as we've already covered, we have our data window, which contains all of our dimensions, all of our measures, our sets, and our parameters. And when we drag a data element from our data window onto a shelf, it's now called a pill. As I touched on, blue pills are discrete in that they do not have a relationship from one to the other inside of the elements. 
and they give us levels of detail. So in this case, we're looking at subcategories. Every single subcategory is going to give us a new row. You also have green pills, which are means that something is continuous, such as a number line or a date series. And these give us axes on which to draw marks. These two shelves on top, which are almost used continuously, are row and column shelves. And they look and feel just like a pivot table would. We also have, as I mentioned before, dimensions on the top, measures on the bottom. All right, so we've covered a lot here, and this module is gonna be the introduction and set the foundation for a lot of what we're gonna do next. You can refer back to this, and that's why I've annotated everything in detail here so that you can actually print these out and keep them next to your desk as we go through the next modules, and which we actually demonstrate all. We talked about visual analysis and the process of finding answers using data and the whole focus of Tableau being to help you iterate through that as fast as possible in a visually compelling way. I explained a little bit about visual perception and how our brains perceive size, shape, and color. The great thing about understanding visual perception is it's tool agnostic. It doesn't matter if you're using Tableau or SQL reporting services or business objects or any of the other ones out there. We as humans perceive shape, size, and color almost universally in the same way. We've looked at Tableau's product family, including desktop, server, online, and public. I've shown you what connecting to your data looks like. We talked about the terminology here, all the different details of this. It's probably a bit overwhelming right now, but it'll sink in as we go through these demos. And feel free to refer back to this as a reference guide. And we've looked at how views are constructed using Tableau's desktop interface. So that concludes our introduction to Tableau. Now let's go get dirty with our data.